Hey everyone, I'm Bluey, and it's time to jump back into Kingdom Hearts, aka Nomura's Crazy Final Fantasy Story with Disney characters. The second Kingdom Hearts game wasn't Kingdom Hearts 2, but Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories for the Game Boy Advance, remade into Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories for the PS2, which is included in the recent HD Remix collections. I will mention the Game Boy Advance version here and there, but for today's review, we're covering the remake. So build up your deck, trust in the heart of the cards, and prepare for some complex anime shenanigans as we head into Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. The story of Chain of Memories follows Sora, Donald, and Goofy after Kingdom Hearts 1 as they find Castle Oblivion, the main location of the game. The gang head in there and explore the establishment, but they start to lose their memories and powers thanks to the mysterious Organization 13, evil people in black hoods who own the place and are important to the story of the next game. Despite being called Organization 13, only four members appear in this game, at least in Sora's story, we'll get back to the other story in a minute. We got Axel, the flamboyant redhead who wants you to have it memorized, okay I do, Larksy, the evil girl, Vexen, the scientist, and Marluxia, the final boss of the game who has a rose scythe they really want to hang on my wall. The organization are mind screwing with Sora thanks to a mysterious girl they kidnapped called Naminé who has the power to mess with people's memories. So Sora has to fight off the organization, save Naminé, and deal with him getting mind screwed with a replica of Riku being thrown in there for some reason. The story of Chain of Memories is good, putting Sora through an emotional journey with the organization members in the game having distinctive personalities with fun dialogue. Although, I think this story could have been condensed and be used as the opening section for Kingdom Hearts 2, rather than the true opening section we did get for Kingdom Hearts 2, which we'll get to it, believe me. But wait, there's a second story to this game! After he beat Sora's campaign, which has him defeat Larxene, Vexen, and Marluxia, with Naminé putting the gang into sleep pods for a year to regain their memories at the expense of the new memories they gained during this game, leading into Kingdom Hearts 2, you unlock a new story called Kingdom Hearts Reverse Rebirth, which has you playing as the worst character from the first game, Riku. He and King Mickey find themselves in Castle Oblivion, where they try to fight off two other organization members, Zexion and Lexius. As Riku tries to control the darkness with him, a struggle that continues through the end of Kingdom Hearts 2. Throughout the campaign, Riku encounters Diz, who is important in the next game, but he helps Riku defeat Ansem, who is inside of Riku's heart after Kingdom Hearts 1's event. The end of the campaign has Riku and Mickey setting off on a journey to spy on the Organization 13, which we will see in Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days. Reverse Rebirth's plot works to redeem Riku from his jerkish behavior of the first game, and it is effective, but the rest of the plot is just set up for the next game, rather than telling its own story. I know Riku redeeming himself is supposed to be the story, but that arc isn't even completed yet, so it's just set up for more games. Now I may be asking, what about the Disney worlds in this plot? Well, they're nearly pointless to the story, just being there for levels. All the Disney worlds of this game are from the first game, and they tell the same story because they're pulled from Sora's memory, so what's the point of them besides brand consistency? This and the new gameplay styles makes Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories very much like a spin-off title, despite the story mattering to the series overall. This will be a problem in other Kingdom Hearts games, but we'll get to them when the time is right. And by time is right, I mean review them. The gameplay of Chain of Memories is what turns most people off from this game. Now, instead of traditional Kingdom Hearts gameplay, we have a card-based battle system. The way the card-based battle system works is that you'll find Heartless, and once you run into them, you'll engage in a battle with your card deck. You can customize your deck with different kinds of cards, like you use Keyblades, Magic, Summons, Potions, or Ethers. Now, this would be fine if it was a turn-based battle system, but you're using your attacks in real time while working to avoid enemy attacks with their own cards. The cards also have a number value to them, which if you play a higher number value than the enemy's current cards, or you use a zero, you can do a card break, which stuns the enemy for a bit. You can also stack your cards for higher number values, but if you stack specific cards, you can activate special moves. The gameplay is why most of the non-Kingdom Hearts fans classify this game as a spin-off upon first glance, because the gameplay itself is very spin-off-y. The gameplay is not ideal, and I would rather have a turn-based version of the system to make it more fun, but this is okay. I like setting up a card deck to use in battle, and it is fun using special moves to mop the floor of enemies and bosses, but it generally feels awkward having a halfway between traditional Kingdom Hearts gameplay and this card deck system. It can be fun to play, but it should have just been a turn-based RPG or traditional Kingdom Hearts gameplay, instead of this weird hybrid that we have between the two. The worlds themselves are just randomly generated rooms, depending on which cards you use. Really, the only difference between world to world is the aesthetics of the world. The graphics of Chain of Memories are fine on PS2, with way better animations than the first game, but I like the GBA version more, not in the way it plays, in fact, I think it plays worse than the PS2 version, 
but the sprite quality has this really cool charm to it despite no voice acting being included. Well, this was a mess of a review, but let's get to the verdict. Is Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories a good game to add to the Kingdom Hearts series? Well, I like the story, and while the gameplay isn't an atrocity, it is a weird and uncomfortable way to play a Kingdom Hearts game, so I'll have to give Chain of Memories a 5 out of 10. I really can only recommend this game to people who want to play every Kingdom Hearts game, or to the rare breed who actually like the card-based battle system. If you really need to know the story, just be that guy and look up the YouTube cutscenes. Ah, dang it, I didn't have a controversial opinion to piss off Kingdom Hearts fans. Uh, Dick Vitale's awesome baby Call of Troops is the best Kingdom Hearts game. There, I said it. Awesome, baby!